Okay, good morning and good morning and good morning again. So glad to see everyone on day three of Boss Library and PD Back to School uh, Professional Development. I'm Casey Boyd, and I want to introduce our very first uh, presenter for the morning. Uh, this is, I can move this over a minute, Jennifer Thrift. And I'm going to give you hosting rights, there you go. And Jennifer's session is called Libraries with Pizzazz. So can you um, can you take controls now? I can, I got it. Okay, I'll drop off as soon as I see your screen. Okay, I can see your screen, take it away. All right, everybody, good morning, good morning. My name is Jennifer Thrift and it is great to see you today. Um, if you haven't seen the Barbie movie, I'm super excited. It was really good. I'm sporting my librarian Barbie shirt. Um, and so we are going to get started today with um, creating libraries with pizzazz. And so um, the bit.ly is below. I will drop that in the chat in just a few minutes as well. And hopefully you can utilize the chat today and I'm excited about that. Um, I'm going to keep you on your toes this morning. So I'm going to be asking you questions that I expect for you to respond in the chat. This is something that I do with my students all the time is that they are always doing something. And so trying to get them excited about, about coming to the library is super important. And so thinking of the things that are popular going on right now. That's why I'm working on my bar Barbie orientation or something like that. When uh, Pokemon Go was really popular, I use that as my gamifying for my orientation. So it's important to keep on your toes. So today um, I'm going to introduce myself. I am a teacher librarian from Charles Pinckney Elementary in Charleston County School District in South Carolina. Um, I was a mover and shaker in 2019 and Really, the reason I did become that mover and shaker was my implementation of Breakout, and I'm going to talk about that today, and I am going to get started with that. This is some different ways that you can follow me. I am on Instagram and Threads and X now. <laughs> um, most of my posting happens on Instagram. I love Instagram, just the setup, and so if you can follow me on one of those, I do try to post on X some as well so that you can see the things happening in my library. So I read a couple of books a couple of years ago, and this really kind of changed my philosophy of teaching. It's always really, truly been about relationships, but I really wanted to focus more on relationships. This book is Fight Song by Kim Bearden. She is the co-founder of the Ron Clark Academy. This is actually her second book, and it's talking about just building those relationships. But the quote that I focus on for every year is, every day is filled with divine appointments and opportunities to have an impact that amplifies our relationships, reach, and reasons for being. And so this quote really touched me and thought, and I made me think, you know, this is what I need to think about each day, starting fresh each day. This is an opportunity for us to build relationships with our children, build relationships with our staff and connect with each other, because that is why we are there. This is why the reason we went into education. And so starting each day fresh is the most important part that I try to remember at the at every day of the year, especially the beginning of the school year, and definitely in January when we're starting to get really, really tired. <laughs> uh, Ron Clark, who is also the co-founder of Ron Clark Academy, this is another book that I read. His quote also touches me too. To me, life is about experiences, the one you make for yourself and the ones you make for others. And so these are the reasons that I how I start my school year. So I think of all the different ways that I can engage my students to keep them wanting to come back to the library for more. So some of the things that I do are creative spaces in my library. So I choose different spaces to designate and create spaces that are comfortable for your kids. And I'm going to talk about those. We use music, we use dancing, 
um, different experiences for them. And I'm going to talk about the details of those experiences. You may have heard them called as room transformations. And so we're going to talk about that. And then I use games a lot. And so the session that was about gamifying your orientation was so great, got so many good ideas. And that's something that I do throughout the year. And so I'm going to talk about that as well. So first off, creative spaces. I was so, so, so very excited to open a graphic novel room in my library. And as you all know, graphic novels are the thing that is the top circulation in my school. So we uh, did some fundraising and opened this special room off the side of the library just for graphic novels. And the kids were very excited. I'm going to show you this little clip um, so you can see the grand opening. So we installed these shelves, had all these books separate, brought in, decorated a little bit with some cheap decorations. And then I invited the kids that had read the most graphic novels, had checked out the most graphic novels for the actual grand opening, and you wait to see their excitement. She was my top person to check out. <laughs> Very excited. All right. Hey. Go-to section. I love it. Forever and out. You love it? So just creating those separate spaces, I break off my biography section, make it exciting and fun for the kids. And so that's another thing that I do. The other thing that we incorporate is music and dancing. I've attached and I will um, send this link out for my presentation, my playlist that I use that I've kind of filtered through. Jack Johnson's always easy because he doesn't have a lot of language. And so I kind of throw him in there. And then we use music and dancing throughout. And so I come up with songs or whatever to teach my kids. Here's one that I've used before um, to teach about how to read information and paraphrase. How to read it, think about it, write it in our own words. That is called paraphrasing. And that is called paraphrasing. Gonna read it. Think about it. Write it in our own words. And that is called paraphrasing. And so basically it's so funny because my middle schoolers come back and my high schools and they can still sing this little ditty that I came up with, which was not really fancy or anything, but they remember that that's what I have to do. I have to read the information. I have to think about what it says, and then I have to paraphrase that information. And we talk about paraphrasing. And so just I using it, using it. music, about okay. it. sorry about that. Um, and then using music to do book tastings. And so you'll kind of see in this video, there's, we, I set up chairs with different books and then I just had the kids walk around in a little circle um, and they pick up the book when they stop for the musical chair, do their book tasting. And we go through that and you can kind of see them moving through the book tasting. Um, and so just using music in different environments kind of gets them excited and engaged. So experiences, and this is a big part of um, room transformations is what you've almost probably also heard. Um, the first one I'm going to, what I'm going to talk about is how I go about implementing these. So I attend PLC meetings with my teachers. We pick the content first because everything obviously should be based on the content. Then we've come up with a theme that would match that content. And then we come up with activities. And so that process is really super important. We usually pick content content that's things that the kids are having a hard time understanding so that we can engage them more. And we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about that. So the first one we did was the Bat Cave. So here's where I need you to um, 
do some chat trivia. And so you're going to answer in the questions in just a minute, something. So get ready. Um, what you need for this bat cave is just black lights, bat spiders, highlighters, um, an Astro Bright paper. It's kind of like a glow room, but we, we did the bat cave. Um, the theme was focusing on some ELA and social studies classroom things that they needed. And so one of the things that we needed was to really look at reading for for details. So I found a breakout on spelunking. And here's what you're like, what is that? So in the chat, if you can tell me what spelunking is, let me know. Go ahead and type it. Spelunking. Oh, Heather was the first cave exploring. Good job. And when was that originated? What year? Any guesses? A little bit earlier than 86, Debbie, not 65, not 80s, earlier than that. It actually originated, oh, there we go, Samantha Singleton in the 50s, 1950s, spelunking. And so the kids were excited because they'd never heard that word. So they were very excited about doing a cave exploration. And this breakout specifically focused on reading for details because this was something they were having a hard time in, with in class. And so they had to do those things in the breakout that we participated in. And then the next one we did was a room transformation or an experience with Starbucks. And I'm sure you've seen these all over social media. This was one of my absolute favorites. Um, all you need is green tablecloths. It was pretty much free. So you can get some green tablecloths. Starbucks actually will donate their aprons or hats, or even my daughter worked at Starbucks. So when she quit working there and went off to college, I took all of her stuff and be like, oh, thanks. And so I threw it in my, my thing so that we could use those. And the kids are so excited about this. They become baristas. Um, this is the setup in my library. So I kind of sectioned off a lot off this section for the kids to utilize. And then we implemented so many different things that they needed to work on. So we did a poetry cafe. We did a sip and see book tasting. The biggest one that our kids were having the most difficulty with was procedural and persuasive writing. And if you don't know anything about um, Starbucks, there's an app that is made up drinks. And so the kids actually had to create, find a drink that was located in this app. They had to talk about the procedure and the procedural writing. And then they had to create a persuasive essay um, to convince Starbucks to put that on their menu. And in the Google Drive link below, I have all of those. I even have some videos that you can utilize to see how that was set up, but it was so much fun. And you can see how excited they are because who does it? Who doesn't love Starbucks? So a little Starbucks trivia. When and where did the first Starbucks open? Let's see if anybody knows. Mm. Seattle, you got it. And when was it? Seattle was the answer. Pretty close, Lori. She said 1970. It was 1971, 1971. So that was the first, very first Starbucks was in Seattle. So loving that you all knew that. So this is our Starbucks. The next one you kind of see is the construction zone. And you can kind of tell that this is in a different place. So I don't only do room transformations or experiences in the library. Sometimes I will go out and help teachers set them up in the classroom and I will go into their classroom and collaborate with them there. So this is our construction zone. The only thing you need is some caution tape, which is super cheap on Amazon. We borrowed the hard hats and the safety vests and the orange cones from people that we knew that worked into construction and they just let us borrow them for a few days. And this this was such a fun experience for the kids. So we focused on the things that they needed to work on were text structure lessons, text features, which you all know that that's really hard for children. Um, and the best part was we had these stations set up and it was so easy. They would complete a station. If they got their answers correct, then they would go and do a Lego STEM challenge and build their Legos. So as they were working as a team, they were building that Lego to see who could have the tallest tower. There were so many things that we implemented into construction zone and it was so much fun. 
in the Google Drive link below, I have all of those activities that I can share, I've shared with you and you are able to utilize those. And so that'll be available for you as well. So here's your trivia for construction. What structure notorious for its 3.97 degree tilt is the freestanding bell tower of a cathedral in an Italian town? Got it, Pisa, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Love that one so much, good job. All right, and so that's our construction zone. And then the next one you see is a magic transformation. And this was actually a school-wide transformation we did on the year that we implemented Rock Your School. And Rock Your School is a get your teach on thing where they the whole school changes their theme for the day and everybody is participating in that theme and implementing an exciting, engaging act lessons um, that get kids excited about learning. It's usually at the beginning of the school year. And so it's around September. So look for that date. So for magic transformation, you just need anything that looks magical. It can be magic wands. I bought a little magic eight ball, some top hats, some capes. You can actually make, make those things. And then basically just making everything sparkle. We can adapt this one to any content. This, I created a magic breakout that actually we're going to do a little um, practice with in just a second, but this can be anything. We did a magical trick uh, with science experiments. We did all kinds of things. All of those are included in that Google Drive that you will get access to as well. Um, whoops, let me go back. And your magic trivia is where was the first recorded magic act performed? Hint, it was in 2700 BC. That was the very first magic act performed. Not Greece. Egypt, you got it, Kelly, good job. It was actually in ancient Egypt, the very first magic transfer, uh, magic trick performed. And so I have all of the um, links to activities and things like that that you can utilize there. Another room transformation we did was Candyland. And this was so much fun. Now, this one was a little more expensive. The good thing about experiences and transformations, you can do them with, with nothing like cheap stuff. Some of them you can kind of go overboard. And we kind of went a little overboard on this. You can tell we have a little candy float. We even had the signs of the different candy land. We wrote a grant for these materials and did a donors choose grant. So we had all of those things. The biggest thing is really just making sure that you have color everywhere. You can add some candy costumes and candy decorations, but you can see that we set this up like a game board so that when the kids actually use dice to go through the games, they had different activities that they would participate in. What, the biggest thing that we um, did with this one was we focused on stems because our kids were having a really hard time with vocabulary. And so we wanted to focus on stems. We also did nonfiction text structures again in this one, but it can basically be adapted to any content. It's been, it's usually using the Candyland game, just a larger version. And you can kind of see in this video the setup of Candyland. And so we basically just took butcher paper, cover the wall, there's your chocolate mountain and all of the different categories. You could make these signs. You don't have to purchase them. We just purchased them because we had written that grant. So it helped us to get these different supplies and we decorated it all the way around. And this was a team effort. When we set this up, it was a whole great level doing Candyland. And so everybody came in and decorated. So it wasn't on just one person. And then we came up with the ideas of the different activities that we were going to use. And all of that information is linked here as well. All right. So here's your Candyland trivia. Name the six colors on the Candyland board. Let's see who can. Red, green, blue, yellow, orange, purple. You got it. Good job. Good job. Awesome. And I see some questions I will answer at the very end in the Q&A. Um, and those are some really great questions. So I definitely want to get those answered.
And I got to get that screen to go away. Okay. Um, other ideas that you can utilize are March Madness. Um, we did a lot of different activities with brackets with that one. The glow is so much fun. The kids dress up. We do Jenga and different games and activities. We did a blind date with a book, which I'm sure a lot of people have done. We just took paper bags, wrapped them up, put a little summary on the outside. Kids loved that. And then um, Alice Island, who I got an idea from one of my friends that is on here now, uh, Debbie Santos, shout out to you. This was a great room transformation. The kids learned so much. It was wonderful. Uh, Super Bowl um, activities and then a surgery room. And so those are some really great ideas that you can use for experiences or room transformations with your students. Other things that I do in my library are games. And I, we talked about gamifying your orientation. And that's really important um, to get kids excited about what you're teaching them in an orientation, because sometimes orientations can be boring. And so, um, like I said, a couple of years ago, when Pokemon Go was huge. I implemented a breakout with Pokemon Go and the kids loved it. They had to go around and find all the Pokemons. Of course, I had to do all the research about Pokemons and because I didn't know a whole lot about Pokemon, but it, the kids absolutely loved it. I want to implement something with Barbie. I started actually jotting down with my daughter yesterday because we had gone to the movie. Do you, if you've seen the Barbie movie, um, here's a little trivia for those of you that seen it. Do you remember the part where they traveled from Barbie land to the real world? Well, I was like, oh my gosh, I could have the kids travel to all those places. So who can name the place, what the things, the way they got there, the transportation in Barbie land? Any ideas? Car, yep, yeah, rocket ship, jet. I don't remember a jet ski. Was there a jet ski? Oh, maybe there was. Boat, snowmobile, rollerblading, bike, tandem bike. Yep, yeah, that was it. The one that I forgot, which I haven't seen anything, is the camper. That And I went back and looked at the video. So I was thinking of different ways you could gamify using um, different things that are popular. That's the biggest thing you have to think about. I go into movies and start thinking about breakouts. My child thinks I'm crazy. But these are the big things that I use. So I use Breakout. I'm a certified ambassador for Breakout EDU. And it is absolutely the number one thing that I will always do with my students. Breakout EDU is a program that you can use. You can create your own breakouts. You can purchase the, the, per, uh, the site license to access the breakouts that are created by educators. I would definitely suggest that our school district actually purchased it for our entire school district. You can have physical breakouts. You can have digital breakouts. There are so many things that students can learn from this. Breakout EDU is probably my favorite tool that I use in my library because it teaches our kids that failure is okay. And I continue to tell our kids that fail just means your first attempt in learning something. So they know that breakout is not, they're not going to always be successful. And what we have found in our school is the kids that are not successful in the direct instruction of the classroom are so successful in these things like breakout and makerspace. Your kids that cannot just sit and listen to a teacher talk are going to get so much more from these gamified things. And so breakout and makerspace are huge things that I will always implement for our kids. And that, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about those. Um, speaking of maker makerspace, one of the things I implemented a few years ago was morning choice. And you can kind of see at our school, this is the beginning of the day. Um, kids come in and they just play games with each other. And so this is a way to get your kids to want to be in the library. This was a huge deal for our kids. They loved it. I implemented board games. I used makerspace materials that I had. And so you can kind of see, whoops, this is a, th this is a couple of students that they had for a whole week been building Tell me what you made. using this device. What? Channels. Yeah, this is the quality adjuster. So what did you use to make it? 
Um, we use the electrical kit. What, what's it called? And so they used a snap circuit and the kids were so excited. They had been building for a whole week, Tell me what you all, uh, all of the different things. And it was so exciting. Um, and then this is just a breakout that I had created using the magic. And so th this was one that I've been linked in for you that you can utilize. And that was just a clue that we had and I'll move on. And these are some Bitmoji re breakout resources so you can build your own breakouts. All of that is linked here. And then um, I wanted to answer a couple of questions. Where do you get cheap decorations, donations? Huge is a big thing. Um, I just send out the teachers will put it in their newsletter. People d donate so much stuff because they want to get rid of all their crap. <laughs> and so that's really important. Uh, does your school have a breakout EDU subscription? I already answered that. And then these are awesome teaching strategies. Oops, sorry. My question is, how do you get teacher buy-in? Um, you start with whoever's excited. Whoever's excited, you just bring them in and be like, let's pump it up. And when their kids start talking about it, everybody else wants to do it because they want their kids to talk about the excitement. So that's how you get the buy-in. Um, donors choose grants are the things that I write. Um, Amazon wish lists are huge. I'm getting ready to go to a grant thing. Okay, and I'll answer some more. more a lot of these are popping up. So I'll just answer these as we end today um, in the Q&A and hopefully that'll be helpful. Here is my information. Please, 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 please reach out to me. I am so passionate about sharing different ideas with, with other librarians. I believe that we are here to work together and it's important for us to share those ideas and not make money off of each other. Um, <laughs> I know that's silly, but it really is true. I think we try too hard to make money off of each other and we were doing the wrong thing. And I, I could go on a whole rampage about that. <laughs> so I want you to reach out to me. I will give you stuff. I am the most giving person when it comes to supplies. If I've done it, I want more kids to, to be impacted. So thank you so much. And Jennifer, before you run, um, <clears throat> You have, um, you, we started about a minute late into the session. So if you want to answer some more of these questions, okay. in the chat, I mean, in the Q and A, go ahead. Go okay, ahead I didn't two wanna... minutes. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, so let's see. Are your library classes used for teacher prep? No. So I am on a flexible schedule. Um, I teach grades three through five. Our school has always been on a flexible schedule. And I am so thankful that I have the support of my administration. Um, that makes it, it hard for people, but I think you could still do it. I think it just would be a little bit harder to um, collaborate, but you would be able to coordinate with the teachers if you're able to do that. Does that kind of make sense? I don't know if that does or not. Uh, is the gaming part of your morning, of the morning before school starts? Yes, it starts as soon as the first bell rings, um, the, when kids are able to enter the building and it lasts until uh, the late bell and then they go back to class. Uh, tips for smaller libraries with not as much space. I think the biggest thing with your smaller library is really honestly just breaking it into different areas and making those spaces creative. So it's something about breaking it up that makes the kids feel like it's unique. So I have a really small biography section. So I kind of just took one little shelf and broke it off and then put a little couple of chairs there. So they thought that it was cool to go sit there because it was in a little space. So it's something about having these creative spaces. And of course, you've got to make sure that you're supervising by walking around and making sure they're behaving, but creating those creative spaces is, is important because they feel like they're cool to go into these different little areas. I guess that's what I'm sorry, trying to say. Um, how do you organize mornings in the library? So very first thing I do when I come in for school, I usually get there about 15 minutes, throw all the game. Actually, I'll put my games out the day before and then I, the kids just come in and choose what game they want to go to or what makerspace activity they want to go to. Um, I even have checkout open so that they can do that as well. Do you have a space where people sign up for makerspace experiences? Yes, it is completely different. It used to be in the library um, as a smaller room, but it got too big. So I actually moved it to a computer lab. And so teachers can take their entire classes there. And that's been good because we've been able to collaborate on um, 
makerspace because our teachers don't really understand makerspace very much. And so I think it's good for me to be in there to help and them understand that process of making. Jennifer, can you confirm um, your, um, I think it's the, your, your, your handle for, um, for Twitter, someone saying, is there a period in your email? Oh, is there a period in your email between Jennifer and thrift? No, it's Jennifer underscore thrift. Got it. Okay. It's underscore thrift. And I will put this link for my presentation in the chat so that y'all can see it all. That way you can actually link, click on these and have all the information you need. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. And you've inspired me. I'm going to go back and look at your um, notes again. There's a couple of things in there I think I could easily use in my program. So everyone give Jennifer some love in the chat, as well as I need you to go on social media, use the boss librarian um, uh, hashtag and say, hey, this was a great session, you know, because we want to show our school districts and our uh, fellow educators that we are taking time during our personal time during the summer to learn so we can all be better. So thank you again, Jennifer, excellent presentation. Thanks. Our next presenter coming up is a dear friend. She is also a school librarian of the year for um, uh, School Library Journal and that's Christina Holsweiss. And I'm going to, 